Hi, this is Ty the Art Guy, and welcome to another watercolor demonstration. This is again another commission from a friend of mine, and I am so grateful for them. Thank you guys very, very much for the opportunity to do this watercolor. This is a uh, beach entrance. This is uh, the wood boardwalks in Florida that always walk over the uh, protected sand dunes and wildlife areas right before you get to our beaches here in Florida. These are always a lot of fun. You never know what to expect. The anticipation of coming across these is always great. You're like, is it going to be surfy? Is this wind going to be high? This looks like a breezy day to me, so we're going to do a breeze. Uh, you can see the wind and the sky that I did with the cerulean blue. This is my Trinity of Greens, my Sap Green, my Light Green, and uh, my Viridian. I think I'm about to add a Hooker's Green to my palette pretty soon and replace the uh, regular green I have. So, anyway, I uh, digress. Alright, so we got the initial washes in. I'm going in here and I'm going to overwork the grass. Um, do as you wish on these if you're following along. I don't intend for anybody to follow along in these. I'm just commentating on uh, how my process of creativity works. A lot of my creative process is influenced by uh, artists who are trying to draw like children. There is a movement that's called uh, naive art, uh, primitivism. Um, David Bates is an incredible artist in the primitivism style of art. It's just like a hair above or a hair to the technical side of folk art. My gosh, I love folk art. Maybe I should start doing some more folk art. I have some folk art projects I'll show someday. You guys will just probably be confused if I show it because it's so, so different than what I normally do for professional work. Anyway, so this is uh, my project here going on and we are doing the sand on the uh, steps now. We are uh, putting a little ultramarine with some Payne's Gray and some burnt umber to get the gray washed out wood look. I'm working out, blocking out some things. You can see, if you look at this, I have gone in with some graphite and blocked in an idea of where I'm going with this drawing based on the reference photo that was up. And I am going to continue to overwork the dark area. I may be pointing out my weaknesses and my creativity. I tend to overthink sometimes, so they tell me. I think that's a curse in my advertising days. I used to overthink concepts to no end. Anyway, here we are. We're doing this together. This is a lot of fun. I'm putting in a little or a lizard and crimson in here to warm up that gray in the wood. I'm trying to get some depth here in the grass. Some definition going on here with the uh, dark colors and the contrast of the bright green grass. I will later warm this area up with a wash of yellow. And uh, currently I'm still playing with that lizard. Here we go, I jumped. All right, so I'm putting in this uh, Prussian blue in a few areas to highlight that there is an ocean in the distance. We just can't get to see it yet because we haven't crossed our bridge, our wood walkway. I think I succeeded on making the breezy look. I love when I go to the coast and it's a breezy day. You can imagine the surf being up. You can imagine the wind blowing so loud you can barely hear. I love that. I love how the grass moves in the wind. I love the textures when I walk over these wood walkways when I go to the coastline. The national coastline, the national park of the uh, Atlantic coast is uh, about an hour away from us and I'm really missing it now in Quarantineville, USA. I'm hoping that maybe I can escape along with my mask and gloves. I don't suspect anybody would be out at the National Park. I wonder if they even leave the gate open. 
because most of the time when back when they closed the national park when the government locked up the gates of the national park were unlocked and wide open so you were allowed to drive in freely and that was a pleasant surprise and all that chaos i suspect it might be the same now i may have to make a trip out I know there's going to be a rocket launch soon, so I should take the kayak out there on the rocket launch day and see if I can uh, get out there in the national park area in the flats with the kayak. There's nothing. There's no better way to see a rocket launch than being in your kayak. Anyway, I digress. We're back to the painting. I am uh, working up this dark area, which is funny to me because I know I'm going to go over this in ink with the uh, free-flowing ink and the dip pen, the India ink and the dip pen. I use a B6 pen nib on large paintings. This is an 18 by 24. And uh, so I like to use a B6 pen nib instead of a crow quill. But we're not there yet, but we're about to be. Sounds like I should play dueling banjos I'm drawing so fast here. All right, a little more warmth in here, little highlights, little touches. When I talk about warmth, I'm talking about warm palettes and cool palettes. I'm talking about the warmer colors and the cooler colors. There is something, I think the Prussian blue is kind of a warm blue. I think uh, their ultramarine is a cool blue. Cobalt's a cool blue. Obviously, Cerulean is a cool blue. And uh, Payne's gray is a nice, cool, neutral. Uh, burnt umber is a warm brown to me or a cold brown to me but when you mix it with ultramarine for some reason it gets a little warmer and I uh, just find that it makes a nice black that way so painting away here we go I think we're gonna start inking all right here's my ink setup I just put some India ink in that little jar this is my uh, dip pen, and now I am just going at it freely based on the reference photo from earlier. I'm just uh, emphasizing and darkening areas. I'm really just kind of strengthening this up with my drawing. There's no right way, there's no wrong way to do this. In fact, you can do the inking first if you have watercolor proof ink. And you can do the inking first, and you can do an ink wash and then watercolor over the ink wash if you like. Maybe the next time I do a painting, I will do it that way and we'll go backwards with ink first and then watercolor. It's a totally different effect. It's a totally different look. I love it. I enjoy it. I've just been in the habit of doing this as a final touch to tighten up my edges, to highlight my contrast and my... Uh, focus on the subject of matter, which is our walkway. This is where I get into my primitivism and uh, my David Bates influence. He was very heavy and uh, dark, heavy lines. Um, please look him up. His work is beautiful. My favorite he did was of uh, an egret, I think, in Caddo Lake in Texas. And uh, the lines are so heavy and definitive, and, but yet yeah, it provides such a great emotion that you get when you get to see these great birds in their uh, natural habitat. So I'm inking away here. Uh, this comes from an illustration background in advertising and I am uh, having at it. So there we go. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for viewing and thank you guys for visiting my website. I hope you all have a very creative day. And please send me messages. Ciao.